Now, the crew members have been working toward a planned spacewalk on Sunday when uh, Will Moore and Verts will lay 400 feet of cable out on the station truss and rig a pair of antenna for the C2V2 system. That's common communications for visiting vehicles. That's going to be used for rendezvous and navigation for American commercial crew vehicles and other visiting vehicles that will be arriving at the station to link up to the soon-to-be-installed international docking adapters. This morning, the International Space Station's mission management team assessed the preparations for that EVA, including having a discussion about a small quantity of water that was found in Terry Vertz's helmet at the conclusion of the spacewalk on Wednesday. And after all of those discussions, the IMMT was a unanimous go for the spacewalk coming up on Sunday morning. Now, to bring us up to speed on all of these issues this morning, we're joined by Increment 42 Lead EVA Officer Alex Kanellakos. Um, let me get you to start by uh, bringing us up to speed on the situation with Terry's suit. What did you see at the end of the spacewalk on Wednesday? All right, well, so Wednesday we completed successfully EVA 30, and at the end of the EVA during repress um, of the airlock, uh, Terry noticed some water in his helmet. And um, at the end of the EVA, when we got him out, out of the spacesuit, he was able to quantify that water by uh, pulling some of it into a syringe. And um, he also commented that the back of his neck was a little wet and that his calm cap, um, which is his uh, ability, it makes his ability to talk and communicate to the ground and the other crew members, it was also a little moist. And um, he, he reported um, uh, about a quantity of 15, he estimated about 15 milliliters of water. That's a very small amount. It's a very small amount. And um, our suits are known to um, during repress, um, basically, when you connect to the umbilical, you have a lot of, of cold air that's going past the cooling system of the suit, and this uh, air will often condense. And as we repress, we have high density gas that's flowing past this condensed water now um, that can often uh, move the water over the crew member's helmet. And we uh, have actually a spec of that. It's about 50, about 57 milliliters is what we expect um, to be pushed up, up to 57 milliliters. You're saying that, that, that you expect there's a specification there, for there's that a spec much. amount, yes, and and it doesn't always happen. It, it often depends on how how cool the crew member's EMU, his spacesuit is, um, and so I, I kind of feel just kind of for for reference here. This is this is about 57 milliliters of water um, in in this uh, bo water bottle here, mm -hmm. and you can see like if if I turn it to the side, you can see how it flattens out, like he saw on on his visor. It flattens out, and it can look really big, but it's it's less than a golf ball size. Mm -hmm. Uh, of water. And so you're saying that this is something that you expect. You've uh, That was the area that you begin to investigate. Correct. So um, this, this spacesuit is actually known to have what we call um, carryover water. That's what we call this, this type of um, occurrence. And um, we've had seven other occurrences of this carryover on the spacesuit. Um, and so, yes, it is, an, is a known, uh, we, we call it basically a feature of, of the, the EMU, the spacesuit. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not a danger to the crew members at a quantity that small. That's correct. So um, going back to my water bo bottle here, um, you know, EVA 22 and 23, when, uh, at the end of EVA 23, when Luca had the, the water in his helmet, it was twice the amount of water that can fit into this water bottle. So the you entire can see bottle. The entire bottle. So you can see that this, this amount is almost, um, you know, a, an order of magnitude less than, than what Luca um, saw. So, and, and this is something you've seen before and, ex in fact, it's expected to happen. Uh, not necessarily expected every time, but we've seen it. It's, it's a known. It's a known feature of our EMUs, and you know that's why we monitor a lot of the parameters on the ground, the data that we receive from the EMU, and we're continually getting data, and we're watching that to to see if if we're having any occurrences of this situation or or of the situation that Luca had, and they're they're very different um, occurrences. So, is everything else all set that, to go on Sunday, too? So, as you mentioned today, the crew is working uh, a lot in preparations for their EVA on Sunday, and that will be EVA 
uh, 31, and they'll be deploying the C2v2 communication system. Uh, they've been working on their tool config, and tool config takes several hours to basically configure all the tools and hardware that they'll be taking out the door, um, from RETs or tethers to um, the actual antennas that they will be taking out the door. That's what they're they're preparing today. And in addition to that, they have lots of procedure review, and also they need to get their suits ready to go out the door one more time. So they, in fact, they had they moved some tasks off of the schedule for today in order to give them more time to get ready. That's correct. So we, I mean, these EVAs, this is a series of three EVAs. It's the most that we've ever done in a row since Space Shuttle. And so they're complicated EVAs, um, and we want to make sure that the crew has is prepared for them and has plenty of time to get ready for them. Great. Alex, thanks for uh, bringing us up to speed on uh, what's going on. Well, Appreciate thank you. It. Increment 42 Lead EVA Officer, Alex Kanalakos.